today I have the opportunity to interview an incredible artist. She's an oil and multimedia creator from right here in St. Louis, boasting an unbelievable body of work driven by passion and an appreciation of the natural world. She's been all over the globe, but she's brought her talents home to STL. Her name is Val. Tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are and what you do. Hi, Brian, and nice to connect with everyone. And my name is Valeria, or you can call me Val too. And I'm a Mexican artist from the north of Mexico. And I have been living in the U.S. since 11 years ago. And I work with acrylics, with oils and watercolors. I have been painting for many years since I was a teenager. And I went to the graph graphic designer school. And I didn't went to an art school, but my, my passion for art has been like always. So I love to, to paint. And usually I call my art as mixed media because I don't focus in just one technique, but I like to, to explore all the techniques. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. A little bit about your artistic journey. How did you get into painting in general? I got a lot of inspiration about nature and my dreams. I mean, li literally the things that I dream, I like to paint. For example, I focus a lot on the messages that I receive. For example, if I dream with animals, I think a lot with the animal from my dream. And I try to connect the, the, the meaning from the animal with the specific moment of my life. And I see the animals like they were messengers and I work uh, toward that. So if I dream with, uh, with eagles, I start to work um, like sketching the eagles and I start to do designs with this animal and trying to figure out how it fits in that moment of my life what's the meaning and I really enjoy uh, the process I mean I like to work with dreams and reality and put it on the canvas okay so I'm, I'm really intrigued by that tell me more about like how how do we get from these very vivid dreams to on the canvas like I suppose I'm curious, are the things that you dream about, the things that you've seen, experiences that you've had, or just stuff that like, comes to you? I think they just came to me. For example, my last dream, and is the painting that I'm working right now, there are two jaguars. And in my dream, they appear like baby jaguars in a pond. And I was walking near the jaguars, but I was not sure if they were just cats. And then they were like um, different doors. And I, I went to open a door. There were like several doors. And I was not sure which door should I open. So when I opened a door, I saw the big jaguars coming to get me. And I was closing the door so fast. And then uh, after I wake up, I feel like I need to paint the dream. And now I, I'm working with uh, jaguars and they are over a pond with water lilies. And right now I'm just like connecting the idea of what is the meaning of the jaguar and what is happening right now in my life that can uh, fit, you know, like a puzzle from a dream with my reality. What is, what is what they want to tell me? I mean, because the jaguars has meanings. So I like to look for the meaning, which is protection. And uh, I think it was like courage. And to also, uh, I think it was like, prote uh, well, yes, basically it was protection. And then I figured out how to... I need to protect myself right now in this moment or how to support someone who probably needs protection, no? someone probably a friend or a family or why this dream is was given to me. So that's why I put my dreams into the canvas and try to 
to find the meanings. Wow, that's incredible. I'm I'm so intrigued. I'm so intrigued by that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So, kind of walk us through the steps of creating one of your pieces. Well, I like to work a lot on my iPad, and I first I like to design. I, I like digital you know like the dig digital painting and drawing or also collage in order to have a sketch and, and then um it's like um basically it's like a collage so if i dream with the jaguars i look pictures of jaguars and then i look landscapes about pound ponds with water and flowers and i stick all together in different layers till i get the composition of the image that from my dream or with something that I feel happy when I see it. And after the, the image is done in my iPad, if I work in a small canvas, I, I just do a print and I, I put it on my canvas, you know? Or if it's a bigger, bigger surface, surface like a big canvas, um, I have a projector machine and then I project my image and I do all the sketch over the canvas. And after that, I start just to paint. Wow. Okay. So I have to ask about the skill development. How did you go from, I guess, painting when you were a kid to now having all these tools that can help you see your vision through? Well, you know, it's funny because when I was a child, I didn't have the support. I mean, yes, my mom and my dad were like, oh, yes. Um, you know, I think just like any other kid, like they give you crayons or pencils and they put you to draw, but not that um, the push for a really kid who wants to be an artist. So basically, I use very, very basic watercolors or crayons and I spend time drawing around my house or trying to copy everything from around like the fruits or if there were if there was a painting on the wall I was trying to paint what I was looking at and in the city where I was living in Mexico there were no art schools or it, it was very complicated because uh, it, Mexico, in the, in the city of Mexico that I was living in Juarez, there are not much art support. So it was hard. So I studied graphic design because it was the more similar to get closer to the arts because they teach you how to draw, but not as a professional artist. So... That's what, that was how I developed myself and I need to, I need to do it by myself because nobody was able to teach me how to create art. How do you, how did you thrive in that environment to where, you know, like there must've been times where you really felt discouraged or weren't getting where you need to go or, you know, you've been doing it for so long, you didn't quite see the progress that you wanted to make. Yes, it was very hard, especially because um, in Juarez, in the city that I was born, uh, we have to leave because the violence and the narco and the drugs and the cartels. So it was very hard, even if you had a chance to do something on the city, something artistic, um, the, the city turns very violent. So... Um, there was no chance to be there to support even other people who wanted to create art. I used to do um, video video events of filming, and it was called Punto Zero, and we 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 used to do uh, like shows, like a little cinema, and we invited people to to project their the short films. It's like a short film festival. We we did that we did that just for one year. After that the city got a lot of violence. So we had used to move to the 
to here to the U.S. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and there's so much that has contributed to like how you view yourself as an artist, like your creative process, like how you interpret what you want to put on canvas or even what you want to put on the computer, like how you want to design something. Tell me how like kind of your life story thus far has shaped your artistic vision. Mm, well, I think um, my story is put like in dreams. Uh, it's because I, probably I want to run away from the reality and the sad things that we're living right now that I like to create like happy worlds with my paintings and where people can feel identified, you know, when you see something in my painting that is going to connect with you. Probably it's not even the same story. Probably you have something very different. I mean, I, idea very, very different from what it was painted, but it's, it's going to be there some point that you are going to connect with me. And I think that's my favorite part about making art because it doesn't matter your story or my story. We are going to to connect with with something that we both are we are going to enjoy. So this is what I like to work um, through my feelings and through my visions and put it on canvas and um, knowing that someone is going to feel happy by looking my art is like something very special to me too. I definitely like and, and I love that about art is like how can we like find those points of interconnection and I think that's what's so special about your pieces is you put so much intentionality into how you want to design something like how you see it through um the different medias that you use um and how you want to tell a story precisely um I think is something that's so unique about you as an artist that not a lot of people pay a lot of attention to um you know People often create, but not necessarily have that um, real sense of understanding of like, not just how I'm going to use it, but how it can really connect with others. And like, um, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely incredible. Thank um, you. I love to hear that. Um, Thank you. So we kind of talked about a few of your challenges, um, but how do you continue to push the boundaries and explore new techniques um, as an artist? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting because at the beginning, um, as I didn't have um, uh, for um, education as an artist, for me has been like uh, everyday discovering about materials, about ways to work the material. At uh, the beginning with oil, you know, I was working very basic, just with oils and some, um, paint brushes and applying just the oil as it is. And nowadays I have learned about more materials that you can use with oil and create more textures and, and uh, work with different surfaces too. The same for watercolor. Um, I think it depends a lot about, uh, I think it depends about the style of the idea that I have, and then I can choose if I want to work with watercolor or oil. And every time that I paint, there are new opportunities to apply like new materials on it or experiment with more mediums and creating a mixture with everything. I mean, the main thing is to make art, no matter if, where you want to add to the oils or the watercolor, or you want to experiment with something. I think this is amazing. And, and for creating, there are no limitations about me, uh, materials. I mean, there is no one who can say, you can use this with oil, or you can put this with the watercolor. I think you can mix everything and make something amazing. That's the greatest thing about making art. And talk talk a little bit more about that. Like, of course we make mistakes. How do you handle when you make mistakes when you're trying something new? Well, you know, 
I love the mistakes, <laughs> especially because uh, uh, as we don't follow a rule for paint or how to paint, you have the possibility to learn how to, to create even new things, the new things to apply uh, paint, uh, oil, acrylics, watercolor. And sometimes the mistakes can give you uh, different, uh, fin a different finish to a painting. And that's, that's going to make it different from the others. So mistakes are not always a negative thing. I think there can be new opportunities. Yeah. Um, that's like that's such a brilliant outlook. Um, I have to ask too, like, um, when did some of those mistakes and like that kind of trial and error process, was there a moment for you when it became, oh, this is serious, like this is really, really high quality? Uh Yes, I think uh, one time I was painting with um, sand. I, 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 I was mixing sand with my painting. And at the beginning, I, I didn't knew how it's going to, I, I didn't knew how it was to look, you know, because it was the first time that I was working with that. And I was like, oh, what is, is this going to look awful? But at the end, you have the opportunity to, to move the the sand or to manipulate the painting and even if if at the end it doesn't look like you as expected you can create something different and this is a starting point to to add your own style what do you appreciate most about your own style of artwork i i love to express like freedom in different um uh, symbols. I mean, I use, I work a lot with feathers or wings and also with the meaning of the animals or the meaning of the flower and also through the look of the eyes of my portraits because I work a lot with portraits. So I, I feel very attached with the, with the eyes of the animals or the portraits because I think they are saying something. When you look at them, they are saying something that only you can understand. I mean, if I paint, I, I paint someone who looks sad, probably it will be sad for me, but for you, it's going to be different. And I think that's amazing. And, and with beauty in the natural world, I can see that as a through line through a lot of your work. Um, what role has nature and animals kind of played into? Well, your... you know, uh, Nature plays a very important role in my art because in the city where well I in the city that I was born in Mexico is in the north is desert so I grew up without looking many trees or green landscapes you know everything was just um, full of dust so for me. Uh, looking trees or landscape when I moved to the U.S. I was like oh my gosh I mean this is a different landscape from the place from Mexico where I used to to live here everything is green you can grow flowers so easily because in the desert it's so hot that you can maintain a green area it's very difficult so living around nature I feel like in my element Thank you. Thank you. So you did an incredible job kind of talking about um, the role that you believe art plays in the world. Um, but how do you think your art particularly can have an impact on people um, specifically? Uh, well, I think uh, my work has an impact in the way that they can um, identify with the, with the personal um, discovery because I think as I discover something from me in every in every painting that I do I think people can relate to that and every time they see one of my work they can they can identify with something and probably that makes like a click um, some people have told me beautiful things about my work and how 
they are touched. So for me, that is priceless because something um, so simple like art can change your mind or your vision to see something. And I think that is very positive. And you, I mean, you can move the feelings of people through an image and that's beautiful. So beautiful. And, and like we talk about the impact, like the impact is real. And you can see like, you know, through your diligent creation, through your, um, the, spe the specificity and the intentionality that you use in every piece and how you use that to tell a story, whether that be constructing the story, kind of how you view it through your YouTube channel or on your Instagram page, or even um, just putting the piece out there and leaving it up to interpretation. Like I can really, um, I, I really deeply admire that sense of intentionality and, and trying to connect with, I suppose, the greater world. Thank you. And yes, actually, this is great because even when I, um, I mean, I'm not uh, from North America, I not speak fluent English, but we can use no words in art. I mean, you can connect with me and I can connect with you because art, it doesn't mean, it doesn't matter uh, which language you speak. And that's amazing. I can like vividly see, you know, a jaguar peeking through the grass. You know, and I can like see that, and I'm like, you know, I especially love animals, so like, um, I don't know. I wonder what's behind its eyes. I wonder why is it hiding. Like, what is it? What from the perspective of the viewer? Like, what am I watching play out? What is it coming towards me for? Like, there's so many things. There's so many ways you can approach it, and I suppose like in different areas of my life, I can see it in a certain way in different areas, of, and that's what I love. I mean, so particularly about your work because that's not. That's not something you see too often um, with yes. a lot of <laughs> Yes, exactly. And I think every every painting has this impact. I mean, they are telling you something to you, specifically to you. But for me, they are telling something different. Probably, probably the same. But I mean, everyone has a story, his personal story. And how do you adapt? an image that you are looking at, how you can make it yours and how you can feel something that probably I don't want to make you feel, but you are feeling something in base to something that I create. And probably it was not my purpose to make you feel like that, but there is it. And that's amazing because um, for everyone is different. I mean, and that's something important to me because uh, when I do a painting, it's also for me, but it's also for you. There's no other, there's no other way you can do that, right? There's no other <laughs> way we can capture that emotion or we can capture that ideal or even, you know, the complex stories that it tells, you know, through the uh -huh. meticulous brushwork in certain areas, you know, the extensive focus on like, how do I make this particular line, like stand out in this particular background and those things shine through in your work. And I'm, again, I'm, I'm so thankful because um, your vision is, is thorough. Yes, and something that I like is the mood when you are painting and you express that mood through the, your paintbrush. And then you ask an ex spectator, you are looking the the strokes and the details but at the time at the same time that you are looking that there is like part of my story on there of my feelings and the things that I was thinking in that moment when I was painting and it's going it's like a, a time machine through painting and it's over there on the painting on the canvas you know <laughs> valid incredible artists who don't really think that way and I think that's that's such an important piece. And, and whether you're creating music, whether you're creating poetry, whether you're creating skits on YouTube, or even if you're doing an interview, how can we, how can we tell that story and interpret that story? Um, uh, switching gears a little bit, I really want to get to know a little bit more uh, about you as an artist and as a person. Um, tell me three things that people should know about you that you wish they knew about you right off the bat. I can be very um 
sensitive about expressing through colors. I mean, for me, everything has a meaning. Um, it depends on the color. My color palette has a meaning, special meaning. And usually I don't like to work, um, uh, let's see, like pale colors. I like bright colors. I have a time when I used to do like um, very depressive work. <laughs> but after, after some time, I think I turned into even a more positive person. And you can see that on my la latest work, which is full of color. And another thing about me, oh, oh yes, when I work, I don't like to work with people around. Um, I, sometimes I feel like I can't paint because I know I have uh, something to do later. So I prefer to, to paint when I know that I have a lot of time to relax and concentrate because I don't want, I don't want like interruptions when I'm painting. <laughs> so yes, I'm, I'm kind of um, strict on that. And another thing, uh, sometimes, well, I really love to to share the. I mean, as an as an artist, I love to teach people how to paint or motivate through my art and make them see that everyone can paint. You know, if you don't need to be good paint a, a good artist I mean everything is about practice and and the feeling that you want to create something so I love to teach people how to paint and to discover make make them discover that they can do great amazing jobs too I'm so thankful but let's let's dig into that a little bit what does that look like specifically in your life a personal discovery, a personal journey where, I mean, you, you need to arrive to a certain point in your life to, to notice and to, like, to take the, uh, well, to take the, uh, the action to paint and to say, okay, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to motivate and I'm going to keep creating. I'm going to keep discovering. So I think that's very important when everyone can have a motivation and work in base of that. So would you say, would you say that as an artist, you had to come to that point to where you got to excel in the way you've excelled now? Um, well, I think as you keep uh, genuine with your work and what the things you all are doing and you you are going to excel because it's very important that you keep your uniqueness i mean that what makes you un unique and express that in your work i think that the basically a uh, key to excel is to be unique and do what makes you happy and and find um like keys to connect with people through your own ideas in the things that inspire you and not in the way to please someone or to make pretty art because someone likes flowers let's paint flowers you know i think as you remain the more unique and genuine you are going to to be successful and excel this is like a that was a 500 dollars life advice answer right there. <laughs> <laughs> um so i'm just i'm just really curious at this point as a creative person as a unique person how have you maintained that individuality um and in what sometimes feels like a world where uh individuality and uniqueness are not a high value uh, well, I think it's important to keep the feet on the ground <laughs> and to stay focused in the present moment because, you know, nowadays 
everyone wants to live very fast and just want to create like massively, especially in our modern times with the technology. So I like to stick um, like very on the ground and creating from the heart. And well, yes, I think I just live the day as it comes. I don't I don't push myself very hard because sometimes it can be painful, especially because um, now with social media, you as an artist can compare yourself with so many talented people. So you, you have to be very focused in your work and your dreams and what you make me happy and just keep your path. I mean, you don't have anything from granted. So you only need to keep um, working and making the best of your work and to share with people who likes also your work. And as you are doing, creating communities where you can feel uh, connected, accepted, and keep growing. That was a thousand dollars worth of game answer right there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So... That was a phenomenal answer. Um, I'm gonna dig in a little bit more. Thank you. Where has that peace been for you? Um, where has that sense of calmness and the ability to clear your mind enough to be able to see your vision and, and to see it through in such an authentic and, and diligent way, um, a very specific way? Um, and that takes a lot of vision. And and I think like again in today's world we don't see that vision uh you know there's people who I, I know who 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 uh, they sit down and it, it's like the world is so unbelievably crazy and unbelievably messy that the vision that you can't even see it anymore and whether that's the artistic vision whether that's seeing what you want for yourself in the future or that's how to have you maintain that um uh, that's an interesting question because uh, I bet everyone is having a hard time right now. And the funny thing about art, is, about creating art, is that can be healing, you know? It, it has that function. So I think making art helps me or helps everyone to keep uh, that peace of mind for moments. And... For me, making art is like doing meditation, honestly. And um, making art takes me to another place, to my safe place, to my comfort zone, where I am. It's my happy place, making art. So um, despite, despite the hard times that I could be uh, facing, I just keep... I think I'm very positive person <laughs> and also um I'm very pa I, I'm very peaceful person um I'm I, I'm not very um how do you say I'm a intro introverted person so I enjoy and I know how to remain in cal in calm despite the chaos so, yes, I think painting and focusing into color is like a way, like put that noise in your head and your stress and all your problems just for a moment, you know, because it, it doesn't last forever, but the, but the, it lasts during the time that you are creating and the, when you are drawing, painting, you, you can put all your emotions into paper, but it's important to, to be aware of that I think when you are when you are aware of your stress or your problems it's easy to to dissolve everything and and put and try to put the things in the right place through art wow thank you so much again thank you again um you're welcome there's so much there um and so much valuable, not just advice for art, but advice for life. 
<laughs> Thank you. Well, I am something that I could say is uh, as an artist, it's important to uh, to to keep thriving because. Uh, we are we are helping the world to heal through art and people who collect or work um, I mean those collectors around the world they are helping helping uh, to create more dreams and more hopes in, and not just for the art for the artists but for the whole world because um, this is going to remain for generations and you never know how your art can impact someone um, emotionally and that speaks uh, I mean that's that's amazing how something that you create through art can resonate with the whole world so you never know what you're doing till someone's getting touch to you to to let you know the impact that you are doing and that's amazing and that's so encourage encouraging so the people if you as a, um, a spectator you have a feeling for something that you are looking please go and tell to the artist because sometimes you don't have the idea how important it is uh, to us as creators as artists to to feel that feedback because that is what keeps our soul uh, shining and happy to keep creating. And when you are happy, um, that's something that you can relate. And that happiness is something that is shared up. Uh, I mean, it's contagious, you know? So keep con keep spreading the happiness through art. I genuinely could not have come up with a better ending. Um, Val, thank you so much for the opportunity to interview, uh, to talk to you, for you to tell pieces of your story. Um, I can welcome. say for me personally, like I'm going to be taking so much of this conversation with me. Well, thank you so much, Brian, for the interview. And uh, for me, it has been an honor as an artist from another country, from, you know, who's, who every day try to um to keep working you know to to give the best of my of my dreams on my ideas with my work with my painting so this is has been very important to me thank you so much thank you again and and that thank you comes from a place of seeing your work seeing how passionate you are about what you create um, seeing the consistency with which you create what you create. Um, it's inspiring um, and it, it makes an impact. It really does. Um, so last thing, um, if we want to find you, where we find you, um, how can we support your vision? Um, if I wanted to buy a piece, how would I do that? <laughs> well, yeah, I have a link on Instagram. If you have the handle, my handle name, and you visit my bio, there's a link which is Linktree, and you can connect with me not only by Instagram, but you can connect with me via YouTube, Facebook, website, email. So there are a lot of uh, ways to connect with me with just one link that you can share. Thank you so much again. I really appreciate you. Um, and to the community, thank you so much for supporting St. Louis artists. Thank you.